Hello. Well, lots of people are interested in taking teaching online. Understandably, uh, there are a lot of teachers that want to stay at home and be able to do uh, video content over the internet to students. Now, there are lots of great tools for doing that, like Zoom and Google Hangouts and Skype um, and other kinds of uh, online streaming services like YouTube Live and Twitch. Um, but you can use all of these, but there are some limiting factors in most of them. And that's that um, typically when you set up on one of those things, you have your webcam and a microphone and that's kind of it. You can share your desktop, but that's kind of it. And I was talking to a teacher just the other day who was interested in being able to show two different things at once or be able to show themselves talking to their students, but then also actually uh, their keyboard because they were a music teacher. They want to be able to video their keyboard and where their fingers are on the keyboard. Um, I, I've also looked at doing some online gaming. So things like D&D, &D, how do I have it so that we can engage with people and look at people, but we can also do dice rolls or look at the actual game board itself without moving the camera around constantly. So what would be really good is if we could have multiple cameras being able to be fed into these live streaming services. Um, and that's exactly what we're going to look at now. So I'm going to show you how to use a piece of software for Mac, for Mac OS, called CamTwist or CamTwist Studio. What this allows you to do is to create your own uh, virtual webcam. So you can bring different sources in from different places tie them together and provide that to your operating system as a webcam. Then when you go into something like Google Hangouts or Zoom or Skype, you can say, use this webcam, not, not your traditional webcam, but this software defined webcam. And you can control the images that flow through into the streaming service. Let me show you what I mean and let me show you how to set it up. So in order to find the software, of course, the easiest thing to do is just type in um, Cam Twist Studio into Google. Um, it'll then come back pretty much the first result, I imagine, camtwiststudio.com. Uh, you can go straight to the download link from here, if you like, um, and just download the software. This is a Mac OS tool. This isn't a Windows tool. If you want to do this on Windows, there may well be other options available, but this video is not going to be for you, sorry. So this is for Mac OS only and for Apple computers. So go ahead and download the software and, and then install the software. So follow the, sort of the bouncing ball, uh, double click the installer. It'll ask for very various permissions. Depending on what version of macOS you're using, it'll ask for various permissions. So just make sure you read each one of those uh, messages that comes up, um, follow through into preferences, and enable access for CamTwist Studio to the various parts of the operating system that it needs to get access to. Once you've done that, go ahead and load CamTwist Studio. So I'm just going to minimize that. And the way I do that is just by doing the command space and typing in uh, Cam Twist. So the name of the application is actually Cam Twist. Cam Twist Studio is part of it, which is inside. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Uh, so I hit enter on that and it should open up the Cam Twist app. And when it loads, it will look something like this. Now, don't be put off if it's a slightly different color, like if the window itself is a different color. I'm using dark mode in macOS, which makes mine look dark. Yours might be, might be light, but more or less you're going to see this screen. And it doesn't look very user friendly. Honestly, it's actually not that user friendly. Sorry, developers of CamTwist. Um, it's, it's not really designed for everyday use. This is special case use. But I'll show you how to configure it fairly simply uh, just to do that uh, process that I was talking about before. So we're going to have two webcams on screen at the same time. Now, on this machine that we're looking at here, my machine, I do actually have two webcams. So I have a MacBook Pro, so I'm using a laptop. It has a webcam in the actual bezel of the screen itself. And I also have a Logitech webcam plugged in as well. Um, so I have two webcams, and obviously you'll need two webcams in order to be able to do this. And we use this user interface here to be able to select the different inputs that we want to flow through to our virtual webcam, which will be used for a Zoom call or a Google Hangouts call in just a moment. So from here, the, probably the first thing to do is to go to uh, Views up here, or View, 
um, and select preview. That's going to help a lot. So this is actually now a preview screen showing what our output is going to look like. And at the moment it's black because there is nothing selected. There's nothing going through to it. So let's straight away go and add um, some video to this so you can see me. Let's add a webcam to this. And the way we do that is in the step one section over here, we have webcam. So I'm going to double click on that and it's going to immediately put that into the step three column over here. We're going to ignore step two for the time being. It puts it straight over here and it says webcam. And we have the settings for that webcam over here on the right hand side of this dialog box. And you can see that the preview has sprung up into life already. And you can see a webcam, which is actually the, um, it's the built in webcam to my MacBook Pro. And it's looking down at the keyboard because my screen is sort of only slightly open. Um, and I like it like this because if I was to do, say, for example, a, uh, a, a game, we're playing a game and I'm going to roll the dice and I want people to know that the number that comes out on the dice is real, then, well, I can move my keyboard away and I can be rolling the dice here. Now, they can't see me, they can't see anything else, but at least with this webcam setup, they can see something which is on my desk. So obviously, uh, experiment with what direction you want what webcam to point where. Um, this is just how to use Cam Twist. So there, we have one camera set up already. And um, if we want to, we can change the camera input here so I can change it to my other webcam. And that's the one that's pointing directly at me. And so now you can see me. So let's put it back to a uh, FaceTime HD camera, which is looking at the desk. And I'm going to call this um, camera dice. Let's call this camera dice. So I'm going to go to here and say save setup. Um, and I'm going to call it uh, cam dice so that uh, when I'm playing a board game, um, I'll know that I use this camera for looking at the dice. Um, then I'm going to uh, clear this out by clicking the X here. Um, and I'm going to select webcam again. This seems like slightly counterintuitive, but it's a good step to go through. We're going to save the other camera. So I'm going to say double click on that webcam. It's going to look exactly the same, but now I'm going to change it to this one, which is the one of my face. So I'm going to go to save setup and I'm going to change the name and call this cam face and click save. Now I have two cameras down in my saved setups. So I have cam dice and cam face. And if I double click cam dice, you'll see that the uh, preview over here is showing the, um, the dice camera or the keyboard camera, whatever it is. And if I double click here, it's showing my face. Now that's great. And if that's all we wanted to do, then we could leave it as that. Uh, in fact, let's, let's go on to the next step now to show how we could just go from here to Zoom and use this directly in Zoom. So if I go and grab myself, set myself up with a Zoom meeting, I'm just going to open up the Zoom client. This works in pretty much the same way as if you're doing Google Hangouts or whatever. Anything you can select a webcam to um, in, as an input to the streaming platform. Um, the only thing I haven't been able to make this work with is FaceTime. So if you want to use FaceTime, then you're out of luck. Um, so let's open up Zoom. And once Zoom's open, I'm going to follow the normal process to say I want to do a new meeting. Um, it's just opened up on my other screen here. Let me bring it across. Um, and you can see here, um, that straight away it's got my webcam. Now look, the audio sync is going to be terrible because this is audio going through Zoom and you're listening to me directly recorded on my machine. Try not to let that distract you. Um, down here at the bottom uh, left-hand corner of the Zoom window, we get to choose which webcam we want to use. So if I just click on there, you'll see that it's actually already selected Cam Twist. So if you've got it, uh, currently select uh, one of the other built-in cameras or the camera that you've got plugged in. You can deselect that and select Cam Twist, and now whatever we do in Cam Twist is what our Zoom meeting uh, participants are going to see. So let me just sort of like um, shrink that down a little bit, push it over to the side, bring out uh, Cam Twist. Still got my preview there. And now if I go to my saved setups down here, I can select Cam Dice, and you'll see my Zoom meeting now is now looking at my dice area or Cam Face. So it's gone back to my face camera. Um, now, you can do um, uh, two more things that I want to show you. Actually, this software can do a lot of other things, um, but there are two more things that I want to show you. Um, and the first one is picture in picture. So we can actually go ahead and click this button down in the bottom corner here, which says PIP, picture in picture. So if we go ahead, actually, what I might do is just uh, clear everything from here. So I'm not currently working with any camera. 
um, and then I'm going to click select, select picture in picture. And now what it's done is it's got PIP webcam. Um, so it's not the same as a normal webcam, PIP webcam. And over in settings, you can do a few different things. So you can, first of all, you can select which webcam you want to be PNP, picture in picture. Um, and probably I want the dice camera to be picture in picture. So I want the dice camera to be in a little box at the corner, but I want people to be looking at me in the main. So let's keep my dice camera, my FaceTime camera selected here. I'm going to go over to PNP settings. And here I can change the size or the scale of the image. So let's set it around about there. And I can choose whereabouts on the screen I want it to be. Now, notice that uh, when I drag it down to the bottom, um, like around about there, I'm using the preview here to see what uh, the people on the other end of the call are going to actually see. You'll notice that actually in Zoom, it's flipped it round because Zoom's trying to be helpful. Zoom's giving me a mirror image of the webcam uh, so that if I'm sat in front of the webcam, I, I sort of instinctively know whether to move left or right if I'm slightly out of shot. A lot of these platforms do this. Um, but when the, the video gets to the other end of the link, it's actually flipped around again and it's looking like this. So I'm going to set it up over on my preview camera the way I want it to look. Um, so I'll set it up just like that. Um, and then I'll go and save that as my picture in picture cam. Um, so let's call it PIP cam, something like that, and click save. Uh, now, with this setup, it works slightly differently. There are some things inside of Cam Twist that can overlay on top of main video sources. So if I go to Cam Face, there you go, you can see me. I can now double click on PIP cam and you'll notice that it now overlays on top of the video. So you can see me and you can also see my keyboard working at the same time. And this is pretty much it. This is what we wanted to achieve. We wanted the ability to be able to stream both of these views at the same time. Um, but I can also, using these saved setups down here, I can flip between them. So if I want to go full screen dice, then I can full screen face than I can, and I can add the picture in picture back on again. If I want to take the picture in picture off and just go from this back to just the camera of me, then I have to come up to this um, settings uh, area here, the step three, and just uncheck that box and it disappears. And that's kind of one of the ways anyway of, of sorting out live what images you want to have on the screen at any particular time. And if that's enough for you, if I've gone on enough and your brain is full, then stop now. There is one other area of Cam Twist that I'm going to get into now, and that's Cam Twist Studio. And if you're interested in sort of taking Cam Twist to the next level and doing a lot more with it, this is where you're going to want to focus. Um, so if I go to View and I say Studio, then this different view comes up here. So let me just um, minimize the other views. I'm going to minimize Zoom as well so we don't get ourselves too confused by that. Now we have um, what you could argue is a bit more of a traditional broadcast setup where we have a pro preview and a program view. And the way that it works is that you build up an image um, uh, that you want to see in the preview side. And then when you're ready, you can press the cut button and it will switch it into what they call program view, this one with the red across the top. And that's what's going to be live. So you can go ahead and sort of set up a view, but without anybody else actually seeing it. Let me show you what I mean. So I can press these buttons down the bottom here, which have been automatically mapped to those different setups that we set up in the previous section of the video. Um, so let's say I want to have cam face. Um, and let's say I want to have the picture in picture camera. Um, we now have this in preview. And when I hit cut, it cuts to it in the main view. I can then say, well, actually, what I want it to have is the dice camera full screen. So I click that. It comes up into our preview display here, and I can go ahead and cut to that, and you'll cut straight to it. You see in the preview image here, what people would be seeing in Zoom is that they've gone straight to that um, direct zoomed in picture, if you like, of the dice. Now, I've currently got this mode on here called swap mode, and that means that whatever's in preview goes to program, whatever's in program goes back to preview. And that's probably a useful way of doing it for most of us that just have 
two different uh, views that we want to see at any particular time. So we can say cut and we can just cut between these two views and focus on what's happening over here in preview. In preview, we're going from me with my picture in picture and then we're zooming in so we can see the dice and then we're cutting back and we're now seeing us with a picture in picture again. We can do other things over here, especially if we add more setups um, inside of the main program. We can add text overlays and image overlays and all these kinds of things. We can build up what we want the image to look like and then we can cut over to that or we can dissolve over to that so you get a bit of a nice transition if those kinds of production values mean something to you. So that's what I wanted to show you. Um, a cam twist with the ability to be able to select different video sources uh, and also with the ability to be able to put the picture in picture, which is here over here um, and also cam twist studio which is sort of going on to the next level if you want to sort of take your production to the next level you can use this to sort of um, give a bit of a polished effect uh, to your online lessons now i've tried this out with zoom as you've seen it works in zoom meetings i've tried it out with google hangouts it works with google hangouts and you can also use this in skype i believe and probably other services too i hope you found this useful um, please let me know if you you've got any questions or if you've got any tips of your own to share, especially our teachers, especially at this time, then please let me know. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.